So these are concept art for my mom's ice cream business logo. And her ice cream business is called Dear Dairy. I then made one where it's a diary book because it's Dear Diary. And I put three ice cream scoops on top along with a pen that looks like a chocolate stick, like a topping. And that's the one that she liked the most, so we were going to stick with this one. Except I thought I could do better than that. So I looked for references online for ice cream scoops and diary books to see what I could make out of it, what I can do better, what details to add, what de what not to do instead. And um, these, these are basically specific, more specific concept art for her to choose from. More choices, basically. So I ended up with four designs that I could think of and I asked my mom to choose from these again and she liked the third one the most because she thought it was cute that it was tilted at an angle. So I moved on to digitalize it using Sketch App, which is the app I use when I'm on my iPad. And um, after I traced what I drew on the paper, I started polishing it even more, where it's my second step in sketching, where I can figure out, I can visualize it as the final product even more. It works for me because at least I don't get confused on what's part of the final design and what's not. As I move on to coloring the logo, I realized making the line art, it didn't look nice as it did on paper. It looks cleaner, but in my opinion, it doesn't look good anymore. It's because I'm a bit out of practice on the app, and that's fine, I guess. If, um, but if I'm making a logo that's supposed to look nice, and, um, and supposed to be on every box, I thought I was going to go the extra mile and be a perfectionist about it. I trust myself more on paper because that's where I'm drawing more, mostly at. So this time, I'm making an actual design where I don't need to take any more creative liberty on the iPad because this is the design I'll just trace on the iPad and then literally just, just digi digitalize it. <laughs> There also come, comes a point in time where I didn't know how ice cream scoops act if they were placed in the corner of a book. <laughs> I don't think I could search for references that specific, so I kept making more kind of drips. And I just decided to sort of melt it in a way where it's the ice cream is melting and dripping on the book, so there's a, it's like a teardrop kind of effect. Um, it doesn't look like that in real life if you put ice cream on top of a book. It doesn't look like that in real life. But since this is a logo, I'm trying to make it more cartoony, more stylish, and more simplistic that way. Mm -hmm. 
I did use a bucket tool to fill in the ice cream scoops at, um, with their respective colors and then added another layer where I drew the line art on top. It's because I'd rather do it manually because I don't know any shortcuts on how to make the line art a uh, different color or anything else like that. So instead of risking it, I just decided to do it manually and draw the line art on another layer. And I believe the pencil tool I used was 9B because um, the texture of the pencil gives it more of a rustic look. Makes the ice cream look more of an amateur drawing, which, I, which is what I was aiming for because I wanted to have a playful, colorful tone because the colors are relatively bright. And you know, it's, it seems childish and fun. The book, in my opinion, is easier to draw than the ice cream scoops because it's just a geometrical shape, a rectangle, composed of even more lines for details. So I just kept drawing lines and more lines. And I decided to, you know, add a bit more detail so the book looks nicer at least. Or, you know, just a bit more finished, just like the ice creams. That's why I added this garter string, which what I think most notebooks have nowadays. So people in the end can recognize it's a notebook, like a diary notebook, and not like an ordinary brown book. And, a fr and then a friend suggested to add a, a, waffle, this, a waffle pattern onto the book, so it looks like a waffle cone. So I added... Uh, crisscross uh, lines onto the book, as I said, more lines, and just colored it so to give it highlights and shadows. And after erasing some lines that overlapped, I even went the extra mile and determined a light source. So. I would make sure the shadows don't overlap with each other, see? So it really just looks like a waffle cone, like what a waffle cone would look like on a book. So I kept going to each um, excess and um, fixing the shadows. Lastly, it's just the pen. I just thought of the most fanciest pen I could think of and drew that. I think I used this symmetry tool because, you know, why not? It's just a simple shape. I might as well just make it easier on myself. It's not cheating, it's a tool, so it's good. So here's the typography or typography part of the logo where I added the Dear Diary and also the description as you can see there where it says FRESH PREMIUM HOMEMADE ICE CREAM Although this creates a problem because the containers of the ice cream are circular so when people were to hold the containers and to read the logo they would voluntarily rotate it so the book was standing upright no longer at an angle anymore 
And when that happens, the description underneath is offset. It's not in the middle anymore. And yeah, that doesn't look nice overall in the end. So we just decided to rotate the whole book instead. Unfortunately, this creates a problem for my ice cream chips. They look really weird. Like someone smeared the corner of it. Well, you will see later when the book appears. Because I created the drips in a way where it respects gravity. But now, as you can see here, if I were to rotate it, it doesn't look right anymore. I didn't want to redo my whole ice cream scoops again. If I were, I'll... Uh, but it looks, it doesn't look that distracting overall. The book and the ice cream looks appealing. So hopefully in the end, no one cares enough. So that concludes the Dear Dairy logo. Finish. Finito. Dunzo.